Hey everyone, this is Chris here with Daily Motor, and today we've got the infotainment tour and demo on this 2022 Mazda CX-9 and its 10.25 inch infotainment system. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at this car just so you can see what we're working with in today's video. Not too much new here for the 2022 model year as far as exterior goes. The CX-9 has looked the same for quite a while, and I would say that it's probably due for a bit of a refresh, but we do like it as it is right now, and uh, we're happy to spend some time with one this week. This particular one is called the Carbon Edition. It's about mid-range, about 45 grand. And um, if you wanna learn more about this car other than just its infotainment system, Make sure to check the links in the description for our full review, our sound system test, and our fuel economy test on this 2022 CX-9. Now that all that's out of the way, let's go ahead, hop inside, and take a look at this 10.25 inch infotainment display. Now I have to get used to not saying touchscreen because it's not a touchscreen. It is just a fixed in place screen with a knob down here at the bottom. If you're familiar with Mazdas, you'll be familiar with how their infotainment systems work. We have two knobs down here that control everything. We have the large control knob and then we have a volume knob and skip knob here over to the right hand side of the main knob. Also down here, we have a back button, a favorite button, a media button, a navigation button, and right in the middle, a home button. The home button will go back and forth between your actual home screen and just a calm screen there. The media button will take you to whatever media you have plugged in. For me right now, that is Apple CarPlay. As you can see the home button will then default taking you to Apple CarPlay. The navigation button will take you to your in-car navigation, the in-house Mazda navigation, which you can see there on the screen. The back button will take you back, which right now is nothing. And then if you hit the favorite button, it takes you to whatever your favorites are um, as far as navigation, radio stations, all of that, uh, whatever that may be on your favorites. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this infotainment just on a basic level, guys. This is a pretty simple infotainment system. Um, we've done a couple of Mazdas at this point and all of them run pretty much identically. But we have five different tabs here on our home screen and you can scroll through them by rotating this knob down here right behind the shifter. At the top, we have information, below that, entertainment, then communication, navigation, and settings. Let's go ahead and start in the information tab as this is the most specific to Mazda thing that we have in this screen. Most importantly, the fuel efficiency monitor. This will calculate your fuel economy for every trip that you do. It resets itself every time you shut the car off and turn it back on. You'll see this in the highway fuel economy test as I used the screen to uh, find out my uh, fuel economy at the end of the test. It was somewhere in the mid 26s. So make sure to take a look at that if you haven't already. Hit our back button here. We also have Sirius XM Travel Link and a vehicle status monitor. That'll give you uh, time to your next service, which is coming up soon, 153 miles. Maintenance details, vehicle maintenance settings. You can see here. The back button is convenient for a system like this that is not a touch screen. Let's go ahead now into the entertainment tab. And you can see that we are default onto FM radio, but if we push down on the knob here, it'll take us to a menu for our source list, favorites, station list, tuner controls, manual tuning, radio text, all of those sort of things. So unfortunately you can't actually tune down here. This only acts as a volume knob or a on off switch for your volume. Um, so if you wanna do manual tuning, you have to go in here and you can do so by using your main control knob and you can tune through all of your stations. So if that's your thing, then Mazda allows you to do that here with the uh, manual tuning section. Otherwise though, uh, you can go through a station list. If that's easier for you, you can actually see what each station is and adjust uh, FM and audio settings in here as well. Um, every entertainment, uh, uh, whether it be Sirius XM, which unfortunately this car does not have activated right now, or AM radio, they all operate the same way. Let's go down to the communication tab right now, which it doesn't let you use when you're using Apple CarPlay. But if you had your phone Bluetooth to this car, this would be your settings to call, uh, message, or do whatever you would do with a Bluetooth phone. 
Navigation screen here, we are currently in day mode, so the screen is white. You can zoom out here, move it around. Tap down once on your control knob and it brings you to your navigation menu. You can also switch the way you want to view your map, 2D, 2D and up, or 3D. Switch it there to 3D, you can see how that looks. 2D and, oh, excuse me, lagging a little bit here. Personally, I just like the 2D view. I think it's nice and simple and straightforward. Uh, you can also mess with navigation settings, travel info there. And if you want to punch in a destination, you can do that right here at the top. Use this circular pad here to put in uh, wherever you would like to go. And of course that uh, works with the knob and it's actually quite convenient to do it this way as opposed to just a regular keyboard that would be almost impossible with this control knob. So let's go back home and go down to the settings tab. Almost done already with this infotainment system. This is probably the most complex part of this infotainment system. You've got your in-vehicle displays setting, which is quite important because the screen gets so bright at night, uh, but luckily you are able to put it in an automatic setting. So when the headlights turn on, it'll turn, uh, it'll, it'll dim the screen for you so it's not blinding you. You can also permanently put it in day or night mode though, if that is what you prefer. Brightness adjust here to manually adjust the brightness of the screen. Make it very bright or very not bright. You can also adjust your contrast here. Kind of neat. You can switch the clock on your home screen to analog or digital. I have it set to digital right now and you all saw that earlier. You can also just make that a blank screen if you don't want to have a clock on it and then a factory reset button down at the bottom. Sound settings here for our Bose sound system. You can see we can mess with all of our tuning, uh, fader balance, and we also have Bose center point and audio pilot, which you can mess with here at the bottom. Safety settings, these will be all of our driver assists. Collision avoidance, parking sensors, all that sort of thing. You can toggle on and off in this menu. We've also got vehicle settings for doors and lighting, rain sensing wipers, and turn signals. Connectivity settings for your projected phones, and then system settings down at the bottom. And that is it for our in-house Mazda 10.25 inch infotainment system. So now let's go ahead and move on to phone projection. I have my uh, Apple iPhone already plugged in here. We can push over once on the knob here and it'll take you to um, your Apple CarPlay. I don't know why it's trying to take me somewhere on Elm Street, but um, we'll ignore that for now. Go ahead back to our app screen here. We do have a wide view, five apps across two apps down. You can scroll through these. As you can see, this is where the knob can get a little bit irritating because say that I want to go back to Mazda. Well, I touch the screen, obviously, and nothing happens. So I have to rotate my knob all the way around and click back to Mazda. So just little things like that can sometimes get irritating when you're using Apple CarPlay with the control knob. But otherwise, everything works pretty fast on this screen. So that is the saving grace here is that you don't usually have to worry about lag. Here's our Spotify screen. And we'll take a look at Waze as well while we're right here. Okay, let's see our Waze screen. You can also have these tabs over here on the left, which you can get to by uh, just scrolling all the way to the left on your control knob. Take a look here at Google Maps as well. There's Google Maps. All right, and that's just about it guys for Apple CarPlay. Um, mostly good here. I don't prefer using Apple CarPlay when I don't have a touch screen. It can get kind of, um, what's the word? I don't know. It just gets very repetitive and having to use this knob a lot here, but honestly not too bad. So let's go ahead and unplug this iPhone and plug in our Android phone to see how Android auto looks here on this Mazda infotainment. All right, we're going to go ahead and enable Android auto here. Once this is an inactive Android, so we won't have all of the features that we just had in Apple CarPlay, but I still wanna show you guys what Android Auto looks like here on the Mazda screen. You can see it's a little bit lower of a quality overall. We see this a lot with Android Auto. It's just kind of a lower resolution. It's a lower resolution than Apple CarPlay. Um, but we'll still go ahead and take a look here. 
always defaults to Google Maps, inactive phone. Here is the uh, Android Auto screen. We have four apps across, and you scroll through these similarly to everything else on this, on this infotainment screen. As you can see here, using the knob. Uh, let's take a look here into YouTube Music. Lags a little bit, but honestly reacts pretty quickly here with the control knob. Podcast, Facebook Messenger, all of the things. Oh, and the car just automatically switched itself into night mode. I'm sure you saw the screen dim there. Uh, but that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope that this was somewhat insightful to you, and I hope that you have um, learned how to use and uh, at least just gotten a better idea for this infotainment system here on this Mazda CX-9. I like Mazda infotainment systems. Sometimes the knob can get a little bit irritating, but luckily it reacts fast enough to usually do what you want, if not the first time, hopefully the second time. Make sure to check out our other videos on Mazda infotainment. If you're curious, we have one out on the CX-30 and the CX-5, both very similar systems, but if you're cross-shopping some of the cars, maybe you wanna see what some of these other screens look like. Also make sure to check links in the description for other videos on the Mazda CX-9. But that'll end it for us today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. This has been Chris here with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.